Just Incredible here with another Mega Man X3 100% tutorial on Blast Hornet. This is the point of the 100% run where things really start to pick up. Uh, more more neon jumps are being used, and even more technical boss strats are being used. Thankfully, this stage is very straightforward, with only the beginning and the end with any complications. So, right here from the very start of the stage, when you reach the first uh, enemy on the stage, uh, you're going to start charging up for a double neon. Now, the reason I don't charge as soon as I teleport in is because uh, for the same reason we only did up to a pink charge for the neons in Tiger and Gravity Beetle. We don't want to cause any lag if we can help it with the full charge shots. So we charge up the pink, which is good enough for these neons. Now for this first elevator, um, we're not going to do the neons one after another. We're going to split them up into two into two halves. Um, as you notice, we'll start charging up right here as we shoot uh, into this enemy, and we're just going to jump over. And once we get down to here, we're going to be at the pink charge. So I'm just going to do a normal jump. We're going to air dash up. Um, this is where the up dash really comes into play with these neons because they really extend uh, your vertical uh, mobility. So we start with a jump and air dash and we want to do the release neon during the up dash to get more height. Now once you do the neon jump you are able to move left and right uh, so you want to move over far enough to get past this overhang so you can air dash up and grab the uh, the side of it. Then you're going to jump off of it. Now this regains your ability to air dash. Uh, this uh, that's a very key thing. And if your timing is good enough, these uh, head gunners are going to fire missiles uh, like a crossfire. You can actually go right through the missiles uh, if you're fortunate enough. And if you do, you can uh, air dash up do the press neon which will get you more height which will also regain your air dash and then you can air dash up and grab the uh, the top of the uh, overhang here and continue on um, most of the time you'll get hit by a missile and hopefully if you do get hit you land right in here so you can just jump up dash and then do your last neon um, if you fail those the alternative is to just climb the wall, possibly over here on this side. Just do a normal jump and then up dash up grab. Now if you have to scale the wall to get up here, you want to be careful of this uh, head gunner firing a missile because uh, the difference between the red head gunners and the green ones, uh, which the green ones won't appear until after you beat this stage, but the red ones, their missiles actually home in on you. So if you're below them, the missile's going to come straight, and then it's going to come down and hit you. So if you do see a missile coming, and it's going to hit you, hold against the wall so you don't get knocked all the way back down. And then if you do get hit, use your iframes to climb up, and then jump over here, and then do another normal jump, and then up dash to get to the top. This is the ideal way you want to scale this elevator, but... Um, it's it's hit or miss. It just depends on your execution. This is this is where the run really starts to become more of an execution factor because any missed executions will cost you more time now than ever. So let's see if I can pull this off. Now I jumped there and got my air dash back. There we go. Now that was that wasn't perfect, but it was better than this. See, I hold the wall there because I know the missile's coming to hit me. That's very important. So from here, after once you scale this elevator, you can go ahead and swap to acid for the uh, mini boss here. So we're just going to keep dashing. Once you get here, you can want to as you descend. You want to stay right close to the wall here, and then as soon as you clear this overhang, 
just move over to the left just a tad. And that will get you here. As you see, the game is starting to lag here because I'm letting all these enemies and sprites come on screen. So, let me get up here for a minute. So, as you come into this big area, you want to keep moving like that so you don't cause any lag. So, now the uh, shuriken fight. Um, okay, the, uh, the shuriken fight, um, any time that you, it is hit with a, any weapon, whenever it's hit, it's gonna, uh, jump in the air as it spins. Um, and also, its invincibility lasts a little longer than 60 frames. I think it's more like, uh, 75 to 80 frames, so you have to shoot, you have to space your shots, uh, a lot further than you normally would. Um, but as um, as it starts to spin, for a moment you can hit it before it starts uh, moving and it won't jump on you. It only jumps when it's moving left or right. So this is the first hit that you're going to see when I get control. Just going to dash into him and shoot him. Very basic. He will not move yet. Once you shoot, you're going to jump back, get on the wall, and you're going to scale the wall because he's going to start moving quickly and when he comes uh... when the shuriken comes towards you you're going to fire a shot and you're going to hold down on the d-pad for the uh... acid shot the acid shot you can actually control by holding up or down as you fire so you want to jump over and hold down and fire the acid and it'll come down on the shuriken as it comes back this way it's it's likely going to hit the wall and come this way before um... It's going to come and hit the wall and come this way before uh, it gets hit. And when it gets hit, it's going to do a jump and it's going to come back down this way. But you're going to stand right here because on the way back, its eye frames are going to end. And you're going to just going to shoot a shot and it's going to run right into it. And when it does, it's going to jump up again and come around this way. Then you're going to dash after it. And its eye frames are going to end once again here in the corner. You're going to shoot an acid, and it's going to jump over you this time. And then for the fifth hit, which takes six, it takes six acid shots uh, to kill it. Full acid shots, not the ones that separate when it hits the ground. So when it comes back, you're going to shoot acid shot number five, and then it's just going to jump over you. And then for the last shot, you just chase it down from behind and then fire, and it's dead. but you'll see how easy it is than me explaining it. So it takes six shots and the iframes are a little longer than uh, normal. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I didn't quite get six there. I'll just reset and reattempt it. I think I think when I hit, uh, shot into the wall, a fragment shot hit him and didn't quite do the do the job. So, take six acid shots, and this gives me a good opportunity to do uh, do this part again. So, let's see. If you fail the neon and get the second, then there's sort of back up. It's not a very good one, but that's where a lot of that's where a lot of time can be lost easily. It's right there in the beginning of that elevator. It just depends on your execution. Now let's see if I can do this fight correctly this time. So uh One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. If you take a hit, it's no big deal. Now for the outside section. Um, you're going to climb out into the outside. Um, 
for the first once you start climbing the first giant hangar, uh, start charging up for a single full charge shot, and you're gonna take out the these first two enemies here. Now, with all these enemies coming on sp screen and firing projectiles, uh, the game's gonna lag if you don't do something about it. So the charge shots are gonna cut cut these guys out of the equation. Then once you pass them, you're gonna charge up another uh, green shot and uh, uh, followed up with some uh, buster shots and try to take out the line of enemies afterwards. Once you get to this second noter banger here, uh, you want to charge up to take out the blocks here because we're going after the chimera armor and you cannot use the robot armors that you've picked up so far until you free this one here that's being held up. So we'll get to the rest of it here in just a moment. So I'm going to start charging up here. I didn't quite get a shot off there. Now we took out the uh, the blocks there. Once you do that, you're going to come down. You're going to switch to, to the tornado fang and we're going to fire drills here to take out this wall. Um, these blocks are basically like a bomb that helps you detonate walls. This one doesn't have any uh, blocks next to it to help detonate, so you have to open it with a drill. Once you fire the drills, though, you're going to shoot two drills, and you're going to dash up here on top of these blocks, just so that when they bust through, they're going to keep going into this block, but they're not going to be powerful enough to take out this block. So you're just going to hang back here and let them despawn off the screen. Then you're going to switch to Buster and come back in and take out this block. Then when you uh, free it, you're going to drop down, switch to Race Splasher. You're going to fire a Race Splasher about uh, right about here. Fall down. Then you're going to grab the wall right about here and start climbing back up. And one of the most uh, wayward shots of the Race Splasher, this, the Race Splasher fires all kinds of shots in all, in all different directions. But the most bottom one, the most bottom shots should one of them should come and take out this hand girder which holds the armor. You don't need to climb in the armor; you just need to set it free to be able to use it. And then you're gonna climb your way out and switch and swap back to X Buster because you're gonna have to shoot your way out of here and then prepare for a uh, neon jumps for the heart tank. So after we bust out, we're gonna switch the drill, shoot into the wall. Swap after we despawn them, swap twice, shoot, grab, and climb. If you need this health, go ahead and pick it up. And now we're going to get the uh, neon jumps for the, uh, the heart here. To get the proper charge so you don't lag, uh, start charging at this point. You're going to see the background of the little fence come down. Once you get to the end of it, you're going to start charging. And then once you get to here, you're going to be at a pink charge. You can be at red if you want, but if you risk uh, crossing the shots over, you might lag the game a little bit. So I'll just start charging here. Now I missed the second neon. You could also get up here with just one neon, but you have to be really close. And that's not really optimal. You can also use the back of, if you do charge to a red, you can use the back of the fence line as a guide to know when to start jumping. Let me see if I can get this. And then just use the air dash after the second neon to grab this uh, wall. So I'm going to go back and try to get this one more time. Now start charging up again and you want to charge full because now you have the possibility of running into Bite. Now, for the rest of the 8 Maverick run, you're going to have Bite show up in one of the bit of Bite rooms. And until you have fought Bite, you want to come into each room with a full charge. But, in this part of the tutorial, I've intentionally uh, put a password in so I don't fight Bite. I'll cover that in a separate video. But, if you should have a uh, still have your full charge coming out of this room we can make use of the charge drill anyway 
So we just going to make our way down this this vertical shaft um, with the conveyor belts. Um, if you have the ch if you need health, use your frost shield to uh, get some health from the uh, from these enemies. If you don't need it, you can use a uh, tornado fang and just disable their hitboxes like we did back in Tiger and Gravity Beetle. Um, I whenever I do this stage, I come down and go along this wall. And the reason is because there's a little uh, visual cue. There's a little spot in the wall right here is that once I pass it, I can hold uh, with dash jump speed, hold left, and thread the needle between the corner of this uh, conveyor belt and this enemy and keep going. Um, if you go early and clip, you can just fall down and do an air dash to get back on track. If you wait too long, you'll bonk into this guy. Um... And then for the final section, we're going to dash along. And once we get to the second um, head gunner, we're going to start dash jumping over and do two dash shots for these uh, columns. And as and once we lower the columns, blocks are going to start falling. But we're going to keep moving so we don't have to deal with them. And then after this pit, we're going to jump up, do two more shots, dash along, jump over the, the, the next head gunner, two more shots. And then after that one, after we jump over this last head gunner, we charge up for gravity well for the Hornet fight. So this section is pretty simple. You just gotta know uh, wh where to jump. Now this looks familiar like in Tiger Sage, but the difference is X can actually jump up onto here. He doesn't have to do a wall jump like he had to in, in Tiger. And there's the thread. Two shots, two shots, two shots. Start charging up for gravity. And he will reach pink charge by the time we get here. Now, now for the Hornet fight. Um, the Hornet fight can be technical if you decide to go for the most optimal strat. And if you fail it, you stand to lose time. But I'm going to do try to do this, and if I fail it, I'll just die. Um, but at the start of the fight, we're going to dash jump to the center of the room. So we're going to be here. We're going to dash jump to the middle, release the charge. Now Hornet's going to get ready to attack, but this charge gravity well is going to stun him before he can move. And when that happens, we want to pause and switch to any weapon. We can switch to any weapon, other weapon, and cancel this uh, this animation to end it faster. But preferably, it's just better just to switch to one weapon over. And it's better to go to Frost Shield. And we'll see why here in just a minute. So as soon as you get control, dash jump to the middle and release. Now, you also have to wait for that charge gravity well to go off screen. If you pause early and he's not stunned, he won't get the damage. Um, the charge gravity well does 6 damage, and an uncharged one does 4. Now, we just released the charge and we've already paused. So now we're going to switch to frost shield which as you see I've done that here now off the pause here's what's gonna happen he is stunned and he's gonna fall straight to the floor and he's gonna take the six damage and I'm still moving with dash speed and I'm what I'm wanting to do I want to sneak in an extra hit because there is a, a weakness rule is what I call it in this game is whenever you hit him with whenever you hit a boss with its weakness uh, he is vul He has no iframes for a period of time after he comes out of his stun. And it's different for each boss, but this is an example of what's going to happen. He's technically vulnerable when he comes out of the stun. So I want to hit him with just a, a one quick shot. And you'll see why, this, why I do this here shortly. So I want to hit him with a quick frost shot, turn around, and I want to switch back to gravity well. And I want to fire his weakness again. If I try to shoot too many ice shards and too many, and they both don't hit him, and one stays on screen, 
I can't swap and I have to manually pause and switch back to gravity well which will lose a little bit of time and then afterwards I want to shoot another uncharged gravity well now depending on what where Hornet decides to go after this first stun he can come to the corner here he'll come to this opposite corner and until his health comes down below half he's gonna go to one of these corners and do another attack Th going this way is better because that gives him more time to go where he wants to go which gives me more time to stun him without him shooting his uh, little Hornet uh, juveniles to uh, cause lag or even interfere with my movement so once this first so once the first frost shot has gone off I'm gonna switch to gravity well and fire it to restun him and then I'm gonna charge up for the second charge gravity well and this is a repeating thing so let's see if I can get the uh, the shot on him I did but I got hit but I still got it and he went the direction I want him to go so that's good so so he's gonna go into the corner he's gonna get stunned now I want to move over into the corner as well because whichever direction he's facing or he's gonna be facing me when he shoots his uh, hornets and if he's facing this way which is the right direction I'm in these hornets are gonna stop and go into the corner and if they don't spread out they don't lag and that's the key and that's the reason why uh, this fight is so technical because you're also in addition to trying to kill him as fast as possible you're also trying to reduce as much lag as possible so you have to keep track of two different things in this fight so now that I'm in the corner and I'm going to get and I'm charging up for a, another charge gravity well when um when he comes out of the stun from the uh, the uncharged one and then I'm gonna uh, ch let go of the charge for the second okay I got hit but that's okay now and now here's where things may get a little tricky for me He's gonna. He's. I just paused, and he's gonna get. He's stunned for the second time, which is six more damage, on top of the uh, eleven I've already done. Now I didn't get the optimal setup that this front that this picture shows, so I'm switching to frost shield. Now off this pause, uh, I want to try to get that shot on him, and then switch to gravity well again and fire another gravity shot. Now, since I didn't get the ideal setup to where I could just grab the wall and drop down and shoot him, I have to jump around and find a way to hit him with the with the ice, and then switch to to gravity and shoot for the for the third pattern. So let me see if I can get it. Oh, I did. Now I shot that gravity well on the wall, so since it's off screen, it won't activate. But I got the shot off anyway. So now after I shoot the third normal gravity well, I'm gonna charge up or the second normal gravity well, I'm gonna charge up for the third charge, just let it go, pause, switch to a weapon, and then off the unpause, switch back to gravity well and fire, and that'll finish him off so if you can keep track of the damage here I've already dealt six from the very first gravity well when I started the fight I snuck in an ice shot on him which was another one point of damage so that's seven then I shot an uncharged gravity well which is four more so that's eleven then I had the char the second charge gravity well ready so when I released it it did six more which is seventeen then I shot off then I got another ice shot in which is another one damage so that's 18 and now I'm shooting this uh, second uncharted well which is 22 uh, right now so that leaves him with 10 health left the charge one the third charge one will deal six and the third uncharged one will deal the last four to kill him and that's why those two ice shots I did uh, were important because it, it, it saves you the time of shooting a fourth charge shot if you had to shoot more gravity that you lose time because it's very very slow
And that's basically the Blast Hornet fight. But I'm going to die intentionally. Okay, he has four health left. I could shoot the last gravity uh, well shot and finish him off. But we already know how the fight's going to end. So I just want to uh, refight him and try to uh, get a better fight or even show an easier fight. You don't even you don't even have to do the ice shots if you're not experienced enough with it. You can just do uh, a gravity well, charge gravity well, shoot a normal one and just alternate them. You don't have to go to the frost shield every time. So if you come in with a charge, you can do this instead. You can just release the charge, pause, swap and then go back to gravity well which is probably easier but it's a little slower don't even fire the the, the eye shots you can just do this that's a lot easier to do but it's a little slower now here you can just charge up for a full shot and finish them off but see you just See, this uh, fight is much safer, but you lose time in exchange for that. Do I have another life left? Yes, I do. I'll try to do the real fight one more time, and then this uh, state tutorial is done. So I'm going to try to get the good fight one more time. If you mess this fight up, you can lose. You can stand to lose a lot of time. This is where all the technical stuff comes in. Got that one. Come over here. Yes. Tap the wall. Oh, I missed it. That wasn't perfect. I missed the shot on the wall. But, not perfect, but it's better than most fights I usually get. But that's it for Blast Hornet. Coming up is a bite, fit, uh, bite fight tutorial, which is very uh, similar to Bit.